Hey everybody. So what I'm doing today is, I guess what I really wanted to do was just talk to you a little bit about some experimentations I've done recently with watercolors. And uh, this is not a tutorial. This is not uh, a review. Uh, it's just that several months back, I saw somebody using some watercolors in a video, not for miniatures. I think this was for a uh, an art restoration project, and I got it in my head that hey, watercolors is not something I've really played with much before. So perhaps I will try them out. And these were the colors he was using. These are core watercolors from uh, Golden Acrylic who I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And I just bought this starter set. It came with 12 colors, or it comes with 12 colors. I don't even know, I don't have the original packaging that wrapped this anymore. So I don't know what this was called. I think this is just like a basic set. Um, and it comes with a tin that can be used as a palette. And as you can see, these are all dried out now. But the, the colors, unlike most watercolors that I was previously familiar with, these actually come in a tube and are, you know, like a gel. And uh, dispense that way. Uh, I'm used to the ones that come in like little solid um, lozenges that you just you know apply water to to get the the paint going but anyway these i i had put all the colors on here so that i could create a uh, a listing of all of the paints in the in the set and there's 12 and there's uh three reds and five yellows ish although the gold deep down here and the sienna are really kind of more brown so you have like two brown three yellow two blue a green and a black well no, i'm sorry Payne's gray not black although if you look at it on on this sheet it really does look black but Payne's gray is a really nice color in general um and of these in the months that i've had this set the color that's really gotten the most use is this uh permanent uh, Alizarin Crimson. Uh, on some colors, this really looks like blood, which is nice. Not so much on this paper here. Um, I also like the Pyrol, Pyroli uh, Red Light. By the way, I did not go to art school, so I don't know what all these, uh, how to pronounce all these names, and I didn't have time to go and uh, look look it all up. Thalo Blue, though, is one that I discovered way back in my early days of painting because there was a uh, Thalo Blue in the uh, in the hobby paints that I used to use, which I can't remember the name of, and they don't exist anymore, so it doesn't really matter. But the their Thalo Blue used to be very transparent, and it was just such a great wash over lighter blues, and so I used it all the time. Um, but apparently this is a green shade and there is uh, also, I guess, a red shade version. Uh, and I guess that just is the difference between, you know, which direction that blue is headed. Um, the Hansa Yellow Light is a very, very light yellow color. I have used this a little bit, but mostly just for mixing with other colors. Because obviously being watercolors, these mix really well. So why, why, why did I want to do this? Well, I mean, experimentation. I am always experimenting with paint, always. Um, and what I normally do is I'll get a new set of paint like this and I will try them out, you know, just see in general uh, how they function and then find ways to work them into whatever projects that I'm working on. And so uh, most recently, I did this um, Kingdom Death Monster model. Uh, she's called Loon. And 
I wanted to get some really bright blended colors on her skirt, which I think you can see here. And so I ended up using um, the yellow and uh, the pyroly red and just did little mixing. And by the way, I think if you came here hoping to find information, you know, more information as an artist about using watercolors in their traditional uh, fashion, you are not going to find that information here. I am merely experimenting and I am not doing it in a way that you would recognize because <laughs> I'm, uh, this is, this is for applying it to miniatures and models and not uh, as onto paper as I did to create those color swatches. But in any case, um, put a little water on my brush here. So I got some of the that light red. Yeah, I should probably make my water more available to me. And get some of that uh, yellow off of this palette over here. So, you know, and then just blend the two. And what I ended up doing on that skirt was really something like this. And I'm just using this dragon wing as a uh, as a place to experiment. Anyway, just add the one color in one spot and then here's our mix and then just blend that up into there. And here's our red down here. And these are way thinner than I want them to be, actually. But you get the idea. So you can just, they blend so easily into each other, you can kind of just easily wet blend. And even once they dry, you know, you could go in. This, is, this has been sitting here since yesterday. Once they dry, okay, I can lay that on top of there, but it's going to start picking up the red. And you could just really blend that on the model. So in a way, it gives you a little working time. It gives you a lot of working time, actually, kind of forever, uh, in the same way that oil paints do. But unlike oil paints, these are a little less forgiving in a way. Um, if you get your under underlayer too wet, it's just going to come right off and kind of create a mess. Now it's not too hard to fix. If you go back and just start, you know, smoothing that color out. But then you're just sort of constantly fighting back and forth that, um, whatever your base tone coming through and then you got to wait for it to dry or you know use the blow driver blyer, blow, bleh, blow dryer or whatever um, but on the other hand you can you can just seal it you know at any point you can just decide okay this is a good point for me to stop and I like where it is, and I'm going to put things on top of this, but I don't want to change what's here now. So you can just do a clear coat over to seal it in. Now, uh, I was experimenting with a red here just to see how that um, uh, Alizarin crimson looked over white. But then on this side, 
I did a base of it's a mix of Liquitex's uh, naphthol red light, which is very similar to the the Pyroli red light, um, and lightened it just with some white. To create this base that is now fixed this is since this isn't a watercolor that's not going to go anywhere and added that same uh, alizar and crimson over that and i got something i really liked and, I and the fact is this is just a dragon that's been sitting on my workbench for literally a year waiting for me to have some inspiration to actually paint it and i thought well you know there's a lot of uh, detail and stuff going on uh, that I can use to show people how this paint works but then I did this I did this red and I was like oh um, I may need to paint the rest of this dragon now because I really like this red I think that's going to work out quite well so <laughs> but let's just show you real quick uh, how this goes on. All right, so I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use my wet palette, and you one of, one thing I should point out if you're if you're thinking about buying these paints is I think this set of twelve paints, and they have each of these tiny bottles has. Or tiny tubes I don't even know how much it's, it doesn't seem like a lot of paint in there but I don't know if you noticed how little paint I've just put on this wet palette a little bit goes a very long way so now I'm just going to be adding some water to it to get it to flow and there is a point if you're painting with this and you actually want to get coverage, there's a point where it is, you can still see some viscosity to it where it still looks a little thickish, uh, where that's going to flow really well and cover fairly evenly. Here, let's, we can even do this on here because I, I don't think this is the, the thickness that I want to use on this project right now but you can see that's that's flowing in a way that you can understand like uh, like a regular hobby paint would and so that's going to cover really well if you want to get a kind of solid look but I want I want this to flow a little bit more like a uh, like a wash so I'm going to add a little bit more water to it and since I'm just using water you kind of have to be careful because there will come a point at which it's just it becomes a wash kinda but it also doesn't want to uh, If, if you don't have a good surface there for it to cling to, it will just recede directly into the recesses. I seem to have found a good a good working point here. Look at how nice that is. Oh my gosh. Here's thin it even just a little bit more. I love this color so much. I don't even know what it is. I just have this kind of visceral response to it that is just, just very satisfying. Here, I put more water on the brush, and you can see how how thin that is.
Now, one of the nice things about using this stuff is if you make a mistake or you're unhappy with something you did, it is possible to just wash it all off. Because it just, it reactivates with water and for the most part will come off. Uh, some of it is going to be left behind in the sort of deep recesses of your of your uh, of your color but most of it will come off it's on there very thin to begin with anyway so um, it's not like it's gonna leave a thick coat that you have to worry about when you're adding more paint on top of it after cleaning this up. You do want to try, I mean, if you are going to paint over this and try to correct this, you are going to want to try and get most of it off of there. But this shows you another potential uh, use for the watercolors and that is for weathering and I, and I haven't actually done much of this yet it was something that I was realizing yesterday as I was playing with this dragon and that is that uh, you could use a subtractive process to perhaps get some really nice weathering effects. So let's grab our Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna is usually a good rust color. This one's not quite as reddish. So there's our Burnt Sienna. Not quite as reddish as, as uh, I would want for a rust, but still a good dirt color, if nothing else. So let's say we wanted to, to weather like a tank or maybe your grim dark space marine. You could add this, let it dry. Let me uh, grab the uh, uh, hair dryer real quick and I'll come right back. Okay, now I'm in love with this color. <laughs> As I was drying this over the wing, I was like, oh my gosh, look at that. That's really cool. So I added some to this color here and oh. I don't know. I, I I think the thing I'm mostly drawn to now with these watercolors is just the color, the richness of this color. But anyway, the point I was trying to make here was that, so you've added this um, sort of dirty brown color, although I don't know, this, it's not really dirty. But you added this brown color uh, to this surface, and then you can, you can, dampen it up a bit and then remove it although of course now I've got this red all over here all over this uh, thing but anyway as you remove it you end up with um, a really nice blend of that color into the recesses And you've got some nice build-up dirt in there. Oh, and look at how how much of the other color actually ends up coming off if you really work at it. I can do the same thing here. Anyway, so now you've got you've got a little bit dirtified area over there.
Oh, I should have dried this out so we could see how it looks. I'll be right back. Hold on. So yeah, now that this is dried, you can kind of see how it matches with the stuff that I did yesterday. Now, I did a lot more goofing around with this. I added some uh, blue into the deep recess, recesses to get a darker shadow there. Uh, I tried lightening uh, some of these ridges, uh, dropped more of that red into some of the, the recesses on the surface of the wing as opposed to into these uh, uh, kind of connection points between the, the bony areas and the wing itself. Um, so there's a lot more going on here than there is here. So this is a little bit darker. Um, but man, it still looks good. I'm kind of excited about it, and I'm, I will have to go back in the very near future and finish this dragon. Not soon enough for this video, I don't think. But I guess, uh, and again, this is a new tutorial. This is more of a, you know, hey, look at what I'm doing. I'd be curious to know um, if you've been playing with watercolors at all, if you've done any experiments, what those experiments might look like, where I could go look at them. Uh, and in the discussion, you know, let's talk about it. I, I'm, I'd be excited. I'll bet other people would like to know what you've done, if anything. Um, and if you have any thoughts on the best way to use watercolors. Uh, I know, you know, everybody's really excited about oil paints right now, but I've kind of been there and done that. And um, I don't really see myself doing that right now. Part of the problem with oils is the time it takes for them to dry. And I'm really all about speed for the most part. This kind of is a little bit of a, uh, a speed bump, but not not so much as a uh, an oil working with oil paints can be. Anywho, that's it. I have experimented. This is some of the things I've done. Oh, let me show you another thing before I go, uh, because I have done some other things with these. Like, um, you can mix them with uh, with regular acrylic mediums and just turn them into regular paint, the dry in the normal way. You can mix them with other regular paints. Like for example, um, uh, a little bit of what I was doing up here was using just regular um, Liquitex paints on top. And of course, they're going to pick up the pigment from the watercolors just the same way the, the watercolors do. Um, so they work, they work in that way as well. And so I've I have made just like regular paints with the watercolors, using them almost like uh, just pigments. So um, those are some other things that I have done. Oh, let me show you. The, yeah, I was going to show you the. Uh, this was a. A chaos guy that I did recently and his gold is simply uh, it is the oh where is my color chart it is uh, this one it's the quinacridone gold deep mixed with pro acryl metallic medium and I got that really kind of cool. It's like a rose gold. Uh, I, I didn't, when I was experimenting with that color mix, I really had no idea where I was going to go. I thought this was, oh, this will just be a starting point. And maybe I'll add some more colors and, and see what happens. And I was like, oh, no, I love this color. I'm just going to use it. So, yeah, lots of things you can do with it. And uh, these colors are just so rich and vibrant. I, they just... I get excited about them and it they're not easy to use you know like you can't just use all of the same techniques that you normally do unless you're going to go lay down a coat lay down a uh, uh, a clear coat and then lay down another coat and then lay down another clear coat and you can do that um, I would be careful uh, if you're going to use um, you, you can't use brush on clear coats over this for obvious reasons. Um, I use an airbrush 
to airbrush on my clear coats, but you could also use uh, clear coats out of a rattle can to accomplish the same thing. But the whole idea is just you fix it in play. You're, you're using a fixative is what they call that, I think, in art terms. Uh, and that's it. So, yeah, let me know what you've been doing, if you've tried this at all. If you find yourself compelled because of this video to go out and try it, um, let me know what you've discovered. I want to know. I want to learn more things, and I want you to help me do that if you can. So that's it. Uh, that is going to wrap it up for today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.